Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Kim Brown in Baltimore. The World Meteorological Organization said on Monday at the Climate Change Summit in Marrakesh, Morocco, that 2016 will be the warmest since record keeping began in the late 19th century, with the average temperatures over two degrees Fahrenheit hotter than in pre-industrial times. In fact, 16 of the 17 hottest years ever recorded ever have been in this century. Now, a growing number of scientists are saying that it is too late to meet the stated goal of the Paris Agreement to keep global temperatures from rising an additional two degrees in the future. But with the pending Trump administration threatening to pull out of the Paris Agreement, can we expect even more extreme weather and climate disasters? Data from the U.N. Refugee Agency said over 19 million people were displaced by weather, water, climate and hazards such as earthquakes in 2015, more than twice as many for conflict and violence, those displaced that is. But with us to discuss this is Dr. Pablo Canziani. He is a senior scientist at the Argentine National Research Council. He's also a professor at the Universidad Tecnologia Nacional. He is one of the authors of the report titled The Truth About Climate Change. Dr. Canziani, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for calling me. So what is our current trajectory in terms of global temperature rise? And is it possible to estimate what it might be if the U.S., the world's second biggest, largest greenhouse gas emitters uh, after China, pulls out of the Paris Agreement? Where are we headed here, doctor? Right now, and even without the U.S. Uh, quitting the Paris Agreement, we're heading towards the worst possible scenario. The, um, the emissions reduction agreed to in, in Paris as, an, um, without a, as a compromise, not as a full-blown engagement as would have been, for example, the Montreal Protocol, tells us that we are heading to a three degree Celsius increase uh, in the next uh, 30 to 50 years if we don't do anything. So um, uh, the pullout or the potential pullout by the new administration in the U.S. is a, one of the gravest threats to the whole of the world right now, to everybody. So what exactly does it mean to have a two to three degree temperature rise by the year 2050, which, as you just said, uh, is what your report concluded? What does the Earth and human life look like at those temperatures? Well, you have a, a number of, of, of events, some of which are already taking place. The uh, decreased sea ice in the uh, Arctic, which is notable this year. You're getting more severe weather occurring around the globe. You have areas, say, within uh, Argentina, Chile, Australia, the U.S., we have more frequent severe storms and heat waves in Europe, the U.S., uh, Asia, that are just beginning. Imagine if that's with a one degree C warming that we've already gone through. Imagine with a two, two more degrees warming in the next 30 to 50 years, what would happen? It's not, and it's not linear. It's going to increase much more. So you're talking about uh, lack of water, lack of food for the human population. You're talking about the loss of many human activities. Um, you're talking about the breakup of uh, countries. You're talking of war. So there are many, many things that you have to, to do uh, to prevent this happening. I mean, it's, it's we're on the wrong path. And denying something that is certain by the scientific community worldwide is uh, it's just putting, trying to hide the sun with your hand. Dr. Kenziani, at what temperature level does the Earth become uninhabitable for humans? We're a pretty resilient bunch. <laughs> I mean, we've been through ice ages and we have been through the uh, warm periods. Um, I think what would probably happen is that you're going to have, in first place, mass extinction of, of animal and plant species, which we're dependent on. And we're probably going to have a, a crash of the human population, but I'm pretty certain that humanity will not disappear at this stage. However, uh, the, uh, the risks uh, of, of what may happen, as I said, even war, and, and the Pentagon has been thinking about that for a number of years already, is a major issue. And I think I wouldn't dare say that it's even a pro-life issue in the sense that uh, we have to care about the whole of human life and the whole of life on the world, not just human life. So uh, we're life dependent in the sense that we depend for food on, on nature, even if we're working on genetically modified uh, plants and agriculture that's still dependent on nature, it's still dependent on climate. Uh, many of 
food sources around the globe, people have different diets, are nature-based, and hence we're, we're dependent on that. And, and the whole life cycle is nature dependent. So if we, if we damage nature, we're putting at risk everything, even our culture. So doctor, let's suppose that the U.S. does pull out of the Paris Agreement and in four years, the next American president wants back in. Now, could that damage from America's not participating during the four years of the Trump administration, at least pr presumably the first and m maybe only term of the pr Trump administration from 2016 to 2020, um, would rejoining the Paris Agreement in 2020 undo the damage that had already been done in America's absence from the agreement? Well, you, you will have, uh, actually it would be more costly for the U.S. society because you will have to take major cuts in the U.S. emissions in a shorter span of time. That means that the costs rise considerably. And, and I think the other thing that we have to take into account is that right now we're in the middle of a technological revolution. We are in the middle of an environmental revolution and hence a social revolution. And that trying to postpone decisions is the worst kind of, of deal for everybody. Um, if we look at the history of humanity, of the Industrial Revolution, of, and of the various revolutions that have taken s since the uh, 18th century, we realize that uh, the role of government is to prevent and, and, and protect society of changes by taking care of the changes, not by denying them, in the sense that it is certain that we will lose jobs with climate change and with technological changes. But it's also very certain that the new technologies and the new activities that will be required due to these changes can create many more jobs than those, than those being lost. So uh, we can change things from a lose-lose into a win-win situation if we have uh, administrations, not just in the U.S., but in, around the globe, which take care of, of planning for the future and of, of, of discussing with society with scientists what are the best options. And the other thing that I'm not sure how the U.S. will pull out is that there are many uh, regulations now, for example, in the re European community that forestall imports from countries that will not respect um, the, the protocols in the sense that they are cutting down on, on the transport emissions, for example, of goods of countries that will not produce according to new cr criteria of emission reductions. So it won't be easy for the U.S. to pull out anyway. Can global warming even be reversed? No, the global warming we're seeing now is actually in delay of about 20 to 30 years in, in, in the response to the atmosphere with respect to the emissions. And it will go on for approximately 200 to 300 years as far as warming goes. As far as ice melting goes in glaciers in the Arctic and Antarctica, the inertia of the system can take over for about a thousand years, even if we stop warming. In, in uh, at a level that it will be take 200 years to get to. So the reductions we make now to reduce emissions will uh, uh, keep the level of current warming at a tolerable, tolerable level for the next 200 years if we take the right steps. If not, uh, people are condemned, uh, future societies uh, are condemned uh, irremediably because of our actions. Okay. World greenhouse gas emissions stayed flat for the third year in a row, doctor, in 2016. And that thanks to falls in China, decreases of those types of greenhouse gases in China. This is the third consecutive year uh, with negligible, negligible change. Uh, and it's down from 3% growth rates in the 2000s. So um, give us an idea, like, uh, why are we seeing this continued rise in global temperatures if the emissions are flatlining? It's kind of what you just said, that these gases stay in the atmosphere for so long that they continue to warm even if they're not being added to. Is that accurate? Yes, and you have to think that when you stop a car or when you try to stop a car, it takes a distance to slow it down and make it stop. Uh, the same thing happens with the atmosphere. What we are emitting now will have an impact within the next 20 to 30 years. So we're now undergoing the effect of the emissions, say, back in 2000, 1990, 1980. We're undergoing consequences of that. So we have to imagine that we're in a car at full speed, ramming, going towards a brick wall, and we have to take uh, measures on the brake that will prevent us from ramming into that brick wall due to the inertia of the car. So the atmosphere is the same thing. 
we have to figure that whatever we do, it will take time, just as it took time for the stratosphere to react to the reduction in emissions of the ozone depleting substances. Doctor, finally, um, for people out there that are still convinced that global warming is part of a natural cycle of warming and that the cooling uh, of the planet is probably inevitable as we have had over the course of uh, Earth's history periods, as you said, of ice age and of warmer periods. How do we know with certainty that this warming that we're seeing right now uh, since the industrial age is in fact man-made? Okay. Um, first thing, uh, you can, we have fairly good models that can simulate the, what would happen to the weather and to climate if there were no enhanced uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And we can, on the same models, run the model through with the observed greenhouse gas emissions so far. And what we see is clearly that rather than the warming that we have right now, we should have had a stable temperatures or a mild cooling. We are at the end of a warm period and going towards a, a new ice age if we, if we think about the, the duration of the cycles of warm and cold cycles in the Earth's climate over the last million years. So in a sense, not only are we not having a mild cooling as yet, we are having a strong warming, which furthermore is extremely fast. And that's a clear signature of a human-induced uh, process. Wow, this is extremely sobering information. Not exactly stunning because scientists like yourself have been saying this for quite some time, but mm -hmm. it, it still doesn't take the bite out, out of uh, how dire this information is. We've been speaking yes. with Dr. Pablo Canziani. He is a senior scientist at the Argentine National Research Council. He's also a professor at the Universidad Tecnológica Nacional. He's been speaking to us today from Buenos Aires, Argentina. He's also author, uh, one of the authors of the report, The Truth About Climate Change. Dr. Canziani, thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, thank you to you for having called me. It's very nice to talk with you all the time and, and help people understand what's going on. Absolutely, and thank you for watching The Real News Network.